thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. Psalm 119, verse 90. God's faithfulness from generation to generation. These words in Psalm 119 contain a truth which is first asserted and second represented by a fit and lively emblem, namely, thou hast established the earth and it abideth. He had before said, thy word is settled in heaven, Psalm 119, 89. Now he speaks of it as manifested in the earth. There the constancy of God's promises was set forth by the duration and equal motion of the heavenly bodies, now by the firmness and immovableness of the earth. God's powerful word and providence reaches to the whole world, this lower part here upon earth as well as the upper part in heaven. The doctrine that in all ages God always showed himself a true God and faithful in all his promises. It is here confirmed by experience and represented by an emblem. Roman numeral one is confirmed by experience. Number one, God's faithfulness related to some promise wherein he hath engaged himself to his people. Hebrews 11, 11, she judged him faithful who had promised. It is his mercy to make promises, but it is his faithfulness and truth to fulfill them. His truth is pawned with the creature till he discharges it. Micah 7.20 says, Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Number two, his truth dependeth upon his unchangeable nature, but it is confirmed to us by experience. God is unchangeable in his nature. If a promise can be made out to be of God, we have no more reason to doubt of it than of the nature and being of God. Yet, as to us, it is confirmed by experience. The word of the Lord is tried. We are led by sensory things, and that that has been done doth assure us of what shall be done, or may be expected from God. God hath been always careful to fulfill his truth, that the event may answer the promise, and we might know that God, who hath been faithful and kept touch with the world hitherto, will not fail at last. The true God is known by his mercy and his fidelity. He never failed to perform his part of the covenant with any. I will praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. As he hath made us admirable and great promises of giving his son, as with him all things, so he will certainly perform all to the utmost importance of them. The matter of his word is mercy and loving kindness, and in the performance thereof there is great truth and fidelity. As he hath made great and excellent promises, so he performeth them most punctually. So then fulfilling his word, God will be known above all that is named or famed or believed or apprehended and spoken of them. Here is his great glory and excellency. Number four, the experience of all generations doth confirm God's faithfulness in his promises. For it is said in the text, thy faithfulness is unto all generations. In the Hebrew, it is from generation to generation. This point may be amplified by two considerations. First, that some promises have been received by one generation and fulfilled in another. Secondly, that the same common promises have been fulfilled to the faithful in all ages. First, that some promises have been received by one generation and fulfilled in another uh, when the matter so required. As for instance, Israel's going out of Egypt. He said to Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. Genesis 15, 
13 and 14. Compare now Exodus 12, 41. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. 30 years were added because of their fathers dwelling in Canaan, but God kept touch to a day. So also for the promise of the Messiah and calling the Gentiles, God fulfilled his promise in due time and sent a Savior into the world. When the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, Galatians 4.4. 4. When the scepter was gone from Judah, Genesis 49.10. When the crown was possessed by Herod, a tributary and foreigner during the Roman monarchy, which at length Christ should utterly destroy. Nebuchadnezzar had a vision of an image of four different metals, the, the head of gold, arms and breasts, silver, belly and thighs, brass, and the feet part iron and clay. While he beheld the image and surveyed it from head to foot, he saw a stone hewn out of the mountain without hands, which stone smote the image not upon the head, breast, or belly, but upon the feet of iron and clay, upon which it vanished away. And the stone became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This vision Daniel expounded of four Gentile kingdoms which should succeed one another with great extent of dominion. The first of the Babylonians, which then was. The second of the Medes and Persians. The third of the Grecians. The fourth of the Romans, which subdued all the others and possessed the riches and glory of the former. During this last kingdom was the stone hewn out of the mountain and smote the iron feet. This stone was the kingdom of the God of heaven, which Christ set up. I must add, will set up also. The apostle telleth us, I, now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. Romans fifteen eight to 10 and The outcome in all these cases afterwards did speak for itself. So in all that is yet to come, we should depend upon the veracity of God. As the calling of the Jews, the destruction of Antichrist, a more ample effusion of gifts on the church, together with an expansion of its borders, as, as the patriarchs all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them. Hebrews 11.13 Secondly, that the same common promises have been fulfilled to the faithful in all ages. There is but one and the same way to eternal life in necessary things. And the dispensation of God to every age are still the same. And so in every generation, the promises of God are still fulfilled as if they were directed to that time only. God's faithfulness hath been tried many ways and at many times, but every age furnisheth examples of the truth of his promises. From the beginning of the world to the end, God is ever fulfilling the scripture in his providential government, which is double, external or internal. External in the deliverance of his people, the answers of prayer, manifold blessings vouchsafed to believers and their seed. Psalm 22 says, Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. The godly in former times trusted God, and trusted constantly in their troubles. And in their trusting, they cried, and did never seek God in vain. This should support us in waiting upon God, and encourage us to depend on his mercy and fidelity. For they that place their full faith in God and seek his help by constant and importunate addresses shall never be put to shame. And then internal, in conversion to God, the comforts of his spirit, 
establishment of the soul in the hopes of the gospel as to the pardon of sins and eternal life. Certainly God, that hath blessed the word throughout many successions of ages to the converting and comforting of many souls, showeth that we may depend upon the covenant for pardon and eternal life. How many have found comfort by the promises? Now, as the apostle speaketh of Abraham, now it was not written for his sake alone, but for us also, Romans 4, 23, 24. So these comforts were not dispensed for their sake alone, but for our benefit, that we might be comforted of God. Having the same God, the same Redeemer, the same covenant and promises, and the same Spirit to apply all unto us, if they looked to God and were comforted, why should not we? His faithfulness is to all generations. He is alike to believers as they be alike to him, for there is no difference. Number five, the experience of God's faithfulness in former ages is of use to those that follow and succeed to assure them of God's faithfulness. For God's wonderful and gracious works were never intended merely for the benefit of that age in which they were done, but for the benefit also of those that should hear of them by any creditable means whatsoever. It is a scorn and vile contempt put upon those wonderful works which God made to be had in remembrance if they should be buried in oblivion or not observed and improved by those who live in after ages. Yea, it is contrary to the scriptures that says one generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. Psalm 145, 4. Tell ye your children of it. Let your children tell their children and their children another generation. Joel 1, 3. That this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, Joshua 4, 6 and 7, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, shewing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandment. Psalm 78, verses 3 through 7. From all of which I observe the following. We should tell generations to come what we have found of God in our time and more especially parents should tell their children they are bound to transmit this knowledge to their children they are bound to improve it that is use it to good purpose either by word or deed by word by remembering the passages of providence the events that God has brought about publishing his mercies to posterity I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Psalm 89, 1. Or by deed, putting them in possession of a pure religion, confirmed to us by so many providences and instances of God's goodness and truth.